Good morning, everybody. And welcome to our service of morning prayer on this, the third Sunday of Easter. I'm very grateful to Gillian, who is in the cathedral today, to have asked me a good while ago whether I would do this particular Sunday for her, because it's always delightful to be back with you again. As I said in St. Thomas's earlier, in a way, for me, this feels like coming home. <laughs> I don't know what, what you feel about that, but for me, it feels a bit like coming home and being back home here. Um, everything you need for the service today is on the order of service, as usual. I mean, or as usually is the case, not quite the same time as it was when I was here with you last time. <laughs> but at least you have everything on the order of service. And we start with a gathering. Christ is risen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Come and hear the good news of God. Come and see what Jesus has done. We will tell the story of God in our world. We will share the secret of hope in our lives. Come and explore the truth of the gospel. Come and receive the Holy Spirit of God. Our opening hymn is, are the first three verses of 266, as it is there on the sheet. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. 
in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand if you can. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. We sit to listen to our first reading. First reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, beginning at verse 12. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. Here ends the first reading. Thank you, June. For our psalm, we sing verses 1 to 3 of hymn number 432. <laughs>
The second reading is from Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 24, beginning at verse 36. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Here ends the second reading. Thanks again, June. We now sing the next two verses of hymn number 432, verses 4 and 5. remain standing as we now affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers. 
and grant our government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness and let your servants shout for joy. O oh Lord, save your people and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O oh Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O oh God, make clean our hearts within us and renew us by your Holy Spirit. The collect for the third Sunday of Easter. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we join together in the collect for use at morning prayer. Go before us, Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favor and further us with your continual help that in all our works begun, continued and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name and finally by your mercy attain everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord of the Church, we thank you for the witness that so many of your people, lay or ordained, demonstrate in how they care for others, how they meet and discuss passages of the Bible and do the work of your church, how they endeavor to do your will in so many ways. Remind us that we need not be experts, that even our little glimpses of faith and truth can be sufficient to lead us to witness to you in what we say and do. During April, we remember the Diocese of Down and Dromore, the Bishop David Maclay, and all the clergy and congregations there. As we do every Sunday, we pray for our Bishop Michael. And this week, we pray for the parish of Glenagiri, the rector Gary Dowd, and all the people there. We also remember in our prayers St. Philip Church, Nablus, in the West Bank, and we pray for all Sunday schools, teachers, and volunteers. We pray for the Reverend Professor Anne Lodge, who will be installed as Canon of Christ Church Cathedral at Evensong today, replacing the recently retired Canon Ashling Schein, who was with you last week. We pray for our rector, Canon Gillian, and for all this, the people in this group of parishes not least for those who are currently serving on the select vestry and those who will take up the mantle at the upcoming Easter vestries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the world, we think of the many places around the world where there is violence, outright war and hostilities. And this morning we particularly remember that there might be a danger of the widening conflict outside of Gaza in that neighborhood. Prince of Peace, we ask you, please be with those who are trying to work towards reconciliation and to broker peace, that they do not lose hope in those situations, but continue in their efforts. We remember all the people who feel lost, the homeless, the refugees, asylum seekers, and anyone who had to leave their homes. We pray for the nations of the world and all in authority, that they be guided in their decisions by integrity and by a desire to eradicate inequalities and poverty. Show us how we can make a difference in that regard, how we can witness in those situations, whether with material means or otherwise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of healing, we thank you for every healing, for surgeries that went well and were successful, for treatment that makes people better. We bring to you everyone who is struggling in body, mind or spirit, the lonely ones, those who are in constant pain, those who suffer from depression, people with any type of disability, those who need medical attention and care in hospital or at home. 
In our own surroundings, we pray for everyone in the care of these parishes, in the Black Rock, Black Rock Clinic and the Black Rock Hospice. We pray for everyone on our healer prayer list, and at this time, especially for Yvonne, Vi, Christine, Neil, Sheila, and June, and for those who want to keep their illness private. In a moment of silence, we think about those people we ourselves have a special concern for at present. Christ the healer, and fold those we have just mentioned and those we forgot to mention with your love and healing presence. Refresh the strength and energy of everyone who provides care in hospitals or in homes, or doctors, nurses, medical staff, as well as family members and friends. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of this life and the next, be with the ones who are about to leave this earthly life. Grant consolation to those who are mourning the loss of a loved one, whether the loss is recent or not. In this Eastertide, you remind us that you are the one who conquered death and promised us the same, that once our days on earth are over, we will be reunited with those who went before us in the eternal life to come. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord of our innermost thoughts, in another short period of silence, we bring to you our own thanksgivings and petitions. We sum up our prayers with the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Now we will have what I believe are the last two verses of hymn number 432, verses 6 and 7. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. 
I'm not sure whether I've told you the story before, but here it goes. At the end of the last century, half my lifetime ago, in the mid-1990s, my husband Tom and I went on a week's holiday to Tunisia. We were staying in a hotel in Hammamet and not wanting to be lying by the pool for the whole week, we went on a few day trips. On our first excursion to the capital Tunis, we went to see the amazing ruins of the ancient city of Carthage. Our tour bus, however, drove off from there without us. Somehow they missed that we were not on the bus with everyone else when the bus left. So Tom and I found ourselves stranded in Tunis, about an hour's drive on the motorway from Hammamet and our hotel. Imagine how helpless we felt at that moment. We did manage to find a taxi driver. The trouble was that this man could only speak Arabic and French. Now, neither of us speaks Arabic, and our French is also rather hazy, with Tom's knowledge of French only consisting of what he could remember from his school days, and me never having had any formal teaching, but only having picked up a few bits when I used to go to France on holiday with my parents. We definitely didn't think we knew enough French to be able to cope in this situation. Nevertheless, we managed to communicate, Tom asking the questions and me sort of understanding the answers. And the taxi driver not only drove us to the depot where the cross-country taxis were stationed, but when he found out that the cross-country taxis wouldn't take us back to Hammermet, he then drove us a good distance further to the bus station. Somehow, our very poor ability to speak just a few words of French and our poor understanding of spoken French in our exchanges with the taxi driver had been enough to enable us to get a bus back to our hotel 60 odd kilometers away. As you can probably imagine, we were thrilled to bits. I think it's great when we are reminded that we don't need to be experts at something to achieve a success. What's even better, our gospel reading today is one of those that shows that even God does not expect us to be experts. At first glance, this text from Luke is quite similar to the story of Thomas from John's Gospel last week. Jesus appears to the group of the disciples who have trouble believing what they are seeing. But there are a few differences. In Luke, the group of disciples gathered in the room includes the two disciples who had just returned from their walk to Emmaus, where they had already encountered the risen Christ on the way. It doesn't look, though, as if the two Emmaus disciples managed to convince the others that Jesus had indeed risen from the dead. When Jesus stands among them and shows them his hands and feet and eats some fish to prove that he is not a ghost, even then the disciples are described as being frightened, as disbelieving, as still wondering, although we are told there is some joy in the mix of these emotions. I think it is pretty likely that after Jesus opens the scriptures to them and asks them to be witnesses and to proclaim forgiveness in his name, some of the disciples will still have felt disbelief and may still have been wondering. We are certainly not being told that they have all changed into expert interpreters of scripture and expert preachers in this short period of time. Nevertheless, Jesus does ask them to proclaim the good news and be witnesses to him, disregarding whether they are experts or not. For us, 2,000 years later, the resurrection can be a difficult concept to grasp in our hearts and minds. Okay, we celebrated Easter just two weeks ago, and liturgically, as we are on the third Sunday of Easter today, the season of Easter continues for another four Sundays, as Gillian also reminded you in her email yesterday. But the resurrection itself can often be something that we can consider to belong to the past, something that happened a long time ago, and that, at best, we can also see as hope for the future, for our own life after death, and for the promise of being reunited with friends and family 
who went before us. I expect, though, that we may all have a bit of trouble seeing the resurrection as something that is of central importance in the here and now, every day, in our daily lives, every day anew. Whether this is due to some lingering doubts or disbelief in our hearts and minds, or whether this is due to the fear we often feel when we encounter suffering and hardship and all sorts of worries. Today's text from Luke shows us that in the middle of our worries and doubts, Jesus is still right next to us, that he keeps saying, peace be with you, and keeps asking us to witness to him and to try live out his commandments. He always meets us exactly where we are at, and all we need to remember is that he is there with us to help us in our attempts to witness to him. We may not be experts at all these things. We may have a, as little a grasp of faith, of theology, of doctrines, as my husband and I had of French. But Jesus isn't asking us to be experts. May we be granted to keep on trying to witness to our risen Christ, and perhaps even to learn bit by bit to do this better as we continue to try in even the smallest and most mundane of our everyday dealings and actions. Amen. During our next hymn, hymn number 266, we will receive the collection. And do note the words that Gillian puts there.
Please remember, everybody, that you are heartily invited to tea, coffee, juice, and biscuits straight after the service here at the front of the church. And although Gillian is in the cathedral today, she will be back this evening for the sausage service at half past six. If any of you want to go along to the sausage service, that is on tonight at half past six. I think I will not need to remind you what it says here in the, at the back of the service sheet, namely that your Easter general vestry is on this week on Thursday evening, and that you please, as many people as, as are possible, come along to that one. You don't all need to stand for the select vestry, but it is always good to have a crowd there and hear what's been happening in the parish for the past year and what the plans are for the future. So this is this Thursday. And do also remember that St. Thomas's Spring Fling is on in less than two weeks' time, Saturday in a week. And as you are normally able to do, and I know that you normally do that, please be there to support them on that end of the parish. Going out as God's people. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the Holy Spirit we may abound in hope. Amen. We are loved, cherished, befriended, accepted. We are not alone. God's love is in us. He knows our hopes, our fears, our questions. This is the truth. God is leading us deep into justice and wonder. God is joyfully walking us home. Go in the peace of the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Mm -hmm.